it's been two weeks since we worked on the hoop house um, because I got COVID and I missed a whole lot of work. And uh, of course, in that time, deer came in and ate everything. So, <clears throat> I mean, it's gonna be a little easier to put the hoop house up because we don't have to worry about standing on the beds anymore because <laughs> there's nothing left. But <clears throat> we still need to get this done. So uh, this morning, <clears throat> I am going to hammer in the final two posts on the B side, <laughs> uh, really close to the hives. Uh, we don't want Griffin to get exposed to that. And yeah, we can both still work over there. It's just that we're gonna need to be wearing B suits. I think they're looking pretty chill right now. I'm gonna try to hammer in these posts and not have to worry about bee protection. But if I start seeing them get interested, then I'm gonna go put my bee suit on. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure the noise and the vibration is probably not fun for them. So that's gonna be my plan. I wanna get these posts hammered in and then, um, then we need to together uh, come take apart the remaining two bows, get the final post hammered in, and then we can bend the final two bows and get those installed. So we're getting close to um, getting the, the framing done. Then we gotta add the wood, put the wiggle wire on, put the plastic on, and then we're done. Still a lot to do, but let's get started. Those stakes are in, um, down that side. And um, I can't do the other stakes yet because they are still kind of welded to the um, stuff down the hill. Um, deer, everybody talks about how there's, there's things that are deer resistant. That doesn't exist. If deer are hungry enough, and in our case, they're thirsty. So California, as usual, is in a drought. There's no standing water anywhere they can only get water from vegetation. So they take what they need because they're starving and they're thirsty. Um, and I, I don't begrudge them that, honestly. Um, I just need to protect the areas that I don't want them in. But I wanted to show you this, how I was talking about how I needed to come in and deadhead <laughs> uh, Calendula and Rudbeckia and all that kind of stuff. Well, they've done it for me. Take a look. See that? <laughs> That was all Rudbeckia. They've even deadheaded the yarrow. Normally they don't eat yarrow. And the calendula. I mean, it's fine. These are perennials. They will come back. Um, my season is over, so I'm not worried about having to harvest. So at this point, <clears throat> it's kind of freeing actually to, have, to let go and to be like, okay, well, they're gonna eat what they need to eat. All of this stuff, except for the zucchini, obviously, will come back uh, next year. And they're just pruning it for me at this point. I really am okay with that. Um, also because I grew all of this from seed and I can start new seed and plant more plants in the, in the spring um, when they're not hungry because they'll have water and food available for them. So yeah, they're taking everything down. And I am being lighthearted about it because I'm actually, like I said, honestly okay with this because again, um, they need it. And right now, because I've ended my season, I don't. Um, Real quick shout out to my customers, my fall uh, session customers who I had to inform that there won't be a fall season and um, I reimbursed all of them. Uh, if you're still waiting on your reimbursement, it's coming. The bank's just slow. Um, but I want to thank them all so much for their support. Um, a lot of them have already signed up for next year. Some of them have signed up for all sessions next year. I'm just... Uh, kind of blown away. I, I feel so much gratitude. Um, it means a lot and I'm really excited for next year already. I'm going to be growing some new things and um, everything will be protected so I won't have this issue and uh, I'm looking forward to bringing my customers some exciting new flowers that they haven't seen before um, next year. So also I <clears throat> so far the results have been good. I'm opening um, a, a standalone CSA for very early spring. It'll be like late February into March, <clears throat> four weeks only, and it's still delivery to their doorstep. Um, 
it's going to be, it's all spring bulbs. So I plant um, fancy tulips, heirloom fragrant narcissus, um, specialty ranunculus. All of these things bloom very early spring. And yeah, you can go to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods and get a, you know, a bunch of tulips for $10, but I guarantee you won't get these tulips or these fragrant narcissus. They are fancy. They are frilly. They, some of them, some of the tulips even have a scent, which is crazy. I didn't know tulips could have scents. Um, <clears throat> so I'm offering a special CSA for uh, doorstep deliveries of those bouquets of those, all those special bulbs. Um, and you know, I'll keep you up over the winter because I plant those in the fall. Um, so I'll do a little uh, video on how we plant tulips in the cut flower industry. You might've seen this already, um, but they get planted super close together, like eggs in a carton. And um, we harvest them bulb and all. So these are not tulips that come back. Uh, we don't perennialize them. We do perennialize, some of us do perennialize our narcissus, our daffodils, um, but um, not tulips. So that's coming up. Uh, like I said, I'm starting to get excited for fall uh, now that I feel the pressure of needing to provide for the season over and I can focus on bringing beauty next season. So that feels really good. Um, this upper field area, still trying to figure out what I'm going to do. You know, it's funny, um, I shouldn't say this yet, but amaranth so far is the only thing the deer aren't eating. So maybe I'll still get some really cool amaranth for the fall. <laughs> and then ornamental grasses. Deer usually don't eat ornamental grasses or any kind of like, you know, the fancy grasses because um, they just don't, they don't like the texture usually. So um, those are still standing as well as the dahlias, which I can't figure out. Not that I'm complaining, um, <clears throat> but everything else is munched. They leave a stem, <laughs> a stem with no leaves. So the plant can't photosynthesize and come back. Um, so anyway, I am looking forward to making changes and, you know, getting new beds set up and getting stuff planted and, you know, getting going. It is, yes, it's only August. And like I've said before, I, um, I do uh, fall planting for all of my spring annuals. And so all of that stuff's going to go in the ground in October and then It'll just kind of put on some vegetative growth uh, between October and when our first frost hits. And then it will just sit and hibernate all winter. And then it'll have a head start on the spring. Stuff that you fall plant that can overwinter will have as much as a month head start on things that you plant in the spring. So it's really a worthwhile thing. Almost anybody in any zone can fall plant specific um, plants. So just look them up. If there's things that you're interested in that are annuals, this is not just flowers, it's vegetables too. Um, look them up and um, you can see if they can be fall planted. Um, if they're hardy down to, let's say it's hardy down to zone five, um, then that means it can survive a winter in your zone five, potentially even in zone four if you keep it covered and protected. So um, just check that out because you might be missing out on an entire season of planting that you didn't even know you could have. Um, all right, flipping the camera around one more time to show you um, gourd excitement. <laughs> I, I'm so excited about this. I thought I was only going to have a couple. I thought this was the only pumpkin. And the funny thing is, the tag says these are Casper white uh, pumpkins, but these things look huge. There's another one. There's another one. There's two in here. And I think there's more. I just can't see them from this position. But I'm really excited because I've never been able to grow pumpkins and squash before. They always fail. And so I'm really excited. This corn um, might still be harvestable. I'm going to check it right now. If it is, I'm going to take it. But I'm leaving these stalks up. These guys are going to stay here until I cut them down in the fall to use for decoration at my house. <laughs> They are definitely going to stay here. They provide shade for the pumpkins and the squash. And look, here's another one. Um, this is a different variety. I'm not even sure what that is. I'm sure I have a tag to it in there somewhere, but it's very deep. Um, <clears throat> oh, and here's another one of goodness knows variety. 
again, I have a tag, but it's just buried in there. So, mishmash of a video. Um, the poop house will uh, go up hopefully the rest of this week, and I might even get the whole family out here. And we might try to all complete the whole thing um, this weekend with uh, five of us working on it. So we'll see. Um, definitely would help to have more people to do the plastic. That's gonna be kind of crazy. <laughs> uh, and this is only a 40 foot long hoop house. Folks who have to do it for 100 feet. Boy, that's nuts. Um, anyway, <clears throat> I'm gonna get to harvesting this corn and um, I think I'm gonna sign off for the day, go home. All right, I'm gonna go harvest some corn and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great time in your garden. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.